Morgan. There's a tooth in there today. You're only eight months old and you're already getting a tooth. Come here. Look at hey! First time. We got a movie? Which one are you gonna watch? Can you tell me what all the movies are, starting with this one here? Alpha, Winnie the Pooh, one in Wonderland, this one. What's that one? I don't know. I think that's a cleaner. Cleaner. Living Beauty, No Light, Bambi, Dollars. And whose movie's that? Daddy's. Uh oh. There we go. There we go. Stand by now. It says record. Now push it again. Okay, okay, okay I got it. Hello, everybody. I'm Morgan. Hello, it's me, but old. I still love Disney movies, just for completely different reasons now. Can I help you? I think the scripts are always really well constructed. I think the music's really good. I think the artistry of animation is beautiful. You can't be pawing at me. This is a very nice dress. I find the historical context of Disney films very interesting because they are escapism in its purest form made to appeal to as many people as possible. So I find it interesting what people needed to escape from at the time of its release. Here, just look at the morning paper. Turn to any page. you find the whole world worrying about some future age. But why get so excited? What's gonna be is gonna be. Now, the end of the world's been coming since 1903. And obviously on top of all of that, Disney movies are nostalgic for me. And I think that's normal and healthy to want to feel connected to a younger version of yourself. Because eventually we all learn how complex and messy life can really be and how often things can go wrong and not be fair and not work out. Yep, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's another reason I love Disney movies is because they remind me that sometimes things can. Which leads me to the people I was blessed to bring on this trip with me. I was lucky enough to go on this trip with Azrai, who basically grew up inside the Disney World Park. It is amazing going to theme parks with you since you studied it. <laughs> you used the word synergy earlier today. I did. It is when two concepts feed into each other. So for instance, the park merchandise advertises the park, and then the park advertises the merchandise, and it's back and forth. It's an infinite loop of money for the company. It's the and my friend Cosmarie, Marie, who had never been to Disney World, at least not since she was very, very little. And part of what made this trip so special to me is just the conversations that Az and Kaza and I got to have on the walks and in the lines. In my realm, we would always be dancing. Oh, playing music. I love two things, outer space, <laughs> That's how you want to go? Elephant, jaguar, polar bear, orca, any of those. You want to become part of the circle of life? Yeah, I, I just want to be a creature. I just want no skin to be showing. Except for monster skin. Okay, we're going to the park now, so I'm going to get decked out in Disney stuff. Come on! Didn't film that bit at the park because I was in fact on vacation. If you will allow me, I'm just going to put a quick selfie in the group chat. <laughs> So we're going to start this adventure at one of four of Disney World's parks, Hollywood Studios. It's themed like old Hollywood. It's mostly live shows. It's, a, it's like a 20 minute show. It will get out when our reservation starts. Oh, okay. And all of the Star Wars stuff is located there. I can't believe you moved. So the place we're going to right now, it doesn't look like a whole lot from the outside, but it has been my lifelong absolute favorite restaurant of all time since I was like 11. This restaurant with this movie real thing completely 100% is the thing that sparked my love for alien creatures and my whole sci-fi thing started here when I was a kid watching this same reel.
And I wanted to start with this park because I feel like it's a representation of everything Disney is now. It houses all of the franchises that the Disney Corporation has bought with its power and money, but with the aesthetic and vibes of old Hollywood. You know, the good old days. We are films principally designed for children. Well, no, you have to appeal to the adults or, uh, well, the, the adults have the money, the children don't have any money. <laughs> Life is composed of light and shadows, and we would be untruthful, insincere, and secrene if we tried to pretend there were no shadows. Guess who said that? Mr. Disney himself! I am aware that Disney, both the man and the corporation, have done some bad things. Very bad, very Googleable things. Did you know that when Coco came out, Disney tried to trademark Day of the Dead? Disney tried to trademark Day of the Dead. But I also think Disney, both the man and the corporation, have done some truly incredible things for the art of film and animation and storytelling. He gave us 50 cents a piece, which was a lot of money. The equivalent of at least $10 now to have a nice dinner and to come back to the studio where he related by himself the whole Snow White story. He acted all the parts. He even indicated the songs. He had the characters, everything in this Snow White picture was completely developed in his own mind. We were also steamed up, so enthused for this project that it didn't really cross our minds to doubt that it could be done. In other words, if Walt felt that we could do it, uh, we'd better find a way to do it. Uh, his greatest talent was as a storyteller. And part of that is that he was, a, he was an actor himself. In front of us, he wasn't embarrassed to do anything. And he became all these creatures. <laughs> It's a magic wishing apple. He wanted to expand the medium. He wanted to expand his storytelling possibilities. Walt Disney himself was the voice of Mickey Mouse. Now he's a tycoon at the center of a vast business empire. Mr. Disney, can you still make a noise like Mickey Mouse? Well, uh, Mickey talks up like this, you know, kind of a falsetto. Of course, he's an old mouse now, and the falsetto <laughs> getting a little old. Who's that, Morgan? Thank you. So one of the attractions in Hollywood Studios is a show called Fantasmic, and I can't listen to the soundtrack without crying. <laughs> I wanted to have this big, dumb, emotional buildup because I feel like this video is going to be perhaps more than an hour of me just raving about how much I love Disney World. So I felt like I needed to provide some context, and I feel I can summarize it no better than explaining what goes on in my head when I hear the Fantasmic music. So the theme of the Fantasmic show is the power of imagination but it always reminds me the power that imagination can have. And the theme of so many Disney movies is the power of dreams and the power of kindness and the power of love. And I don't know if you can tell by the everything about me, but I identify with that a lot. The characters and the art and the stories that Disney has crafted make me feel powerful. And all of those traits of gentleness lead to showcasing the things I was talking about earlier, where Sometimes things can work out. Sometimes you do meet your one true love. Sometimes evil doesn't win. And listen, I understand that these are all fairy tales and CG rendered animations and stories people made up, but they remind me of the extraordinary people that I am blessed to have around me and the incredible things that they do and can do and the amazing things that come out of their imaginations. And that's why I wanted to put such an emphasis on Walt Disney himself, because he was a very flawed person, but he was still just one person who pioneered what is now one of the biggest entertainment companies in the world. And it's, it's not in the American dream kind of way. Just these stories mean so much to so many people. They mean a lot to me. We were told by all the big movie moguls in Hollywood that People just wouldn't sit still for an hour and a half of cartoons because the bright colors would hurt your eyes. Everybody get up and walk out. You're going to have gags all the way and people get tired of it. Well, Walt was a better storyteller than that. He realized you had to have the pathos, the love scene, and the, and the gags and the chase and all of the regular things that make a good picture. During the last few years, we've ventured into a lot of different fields. We've had the opportunity to meet and work with a lot of wonderful people. I only hope that we never lose sight of one thing that was all started by a match. And I just think it's really neat 
that one of the biggest things in the entire world figuratively started with one of the smallest. It all started with the mouse. I mean, most of the old Mickey Mouse stuff Walt drew himself. That's his hands. Lines that he personally drew. It started with him animating, like, sometimes in his garage. He had a heck of a time getting enough money to finish Snow White. Six months later, with the profits of Snow White, I built a studio. This afternoon, Disneyland will be unveiled. Walt Disney is dead tonight at the age of 65. Walt Disney World. Is a tribute. Here are the nominees for the best picture. Beauty and the Beast. In recognition of their steadily growing importance, the Academy has added a new category, animated feature film. Some imagination, huh? <laughs> When are you taking this off okay, Broadway, Mo? Okay. Ugh. Cue all the comments about me being a Disney adult. <laughs> Films and music are not the only thing in the world to get people emotional and stand in long lines in big crowds. Like sports. Bands. Listen, it's not lost on me that the main demographic of Disney adults is female, but we're not gonna talk about that. You never hear about Marvel adults, but we're not gonna talk about Is it not the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror anymore? the canonical name of the hotel. Clear out the cobwebs, add new plans, new drapes. So before we go back to the park, we're gonna take a little look at where we were staying, which was two different Disney resorts. There's the bathroom, there's the car wash, and there's little bubbles. We got traffic cone imagery everywhere. And if you look at the floor, it's traffic cones. <laughs> And I'd like to take a second to thank my Patreons because I was lucky enough to go to Disney World when I was young, but me and my family stayed at a motel very far away and had to drive there. I'm so scared. Just to let you know. I'm so scared. <laughs> Just to let you know, um, we are parked in Dopey 105. That goes out to my mom. Thank you. And things as bougie as staying in a Disney resort always seemed impossible to me, but thanks to their support, I got the full experience. And I truly feel like this was the full experience. Like I've literally pretended to be at wizard school in a castle in England. I've pretended to be a pirate on a ship in the Baltic Sea. Is this a good place to tell people to subscribe? Smash that subscribe button. I do weird things. And staying at a Disney resort made me feel a lot of similar ways. I did feel really disconnected from the real world and completely immersed in this Disney-ified one. Everybody at the breakfast hall called me princess and we're all really nice. It's already really magical. And we haven't even, we haven't even been to the park yet. God, I wanna stay at that Star Wars LARP hotel that they just opened up. It's like $5,000. <laughs> Time will tell. Support me on Patreon. <laughs> and not only is it good for like a lot of aesthetic reasons, but it's also really good for a lot of practical ones. All of the hotel rooms had this TV channel that played a really pretty medley of Disney music and showed information about the park, like the weather, when it was closing, if there were special events happening. And the TV channels are on YouTube and I'll just put it on for background noise sometimes. And if you're staying at a Disney resort, you get more hours in the park. So all of the lines would like completely clear out and we could get one more ride in before we went to bed. They give you this little bracelet that has your ticket and your room key on it and kind of works as like your pass throughout the park. You can buy a bunch of different kinds of them. And it can be a medallion instead. <laughs> oh, that's really cool. That's really cool. What? There's a power line one. Power line? Power line. From the Goofy movie. I don't think I've ever seen the Goofy movie. I've seen I've seen an, an extreme Goofy movie, you know where they Michael Jackson. So if you stay at the Disney Resort, there's like buses that go to all of the parks. So you never have to worry about Ubers or driving anywhere. There's always just a direct bus to wherever you want to go. But one night we stayed until close and the line for the buses was really, really long and we were all really tired. So if you get the Lyft app, you can even get a car that's all Disneyfied. You can get a mini bus. Get it? Because it's like mini map. Where are you going today? Oh, thank you! Oh, that is so special! Thank you! Thank you, Alex! Oh, wow, it's time for each and every one of you. 
one of you to make your own special memories right here in Town Square. We'll, we'll see you in a minute. little streets are going to be very intriguing, little shops and things, and people can wander around in there. Adventure. We're gonna we're, gonna, we're ready to enlist in adventure. Hello, Hello. we are ready to enlist in adventure. <laughs> Crew of four, your map is head to wings. You'll activate it with your magic bands, and then it will tell you where to go after that. Any, any advice for, for us as adventurers? Uh, keep your eyes peeled. You don't know what's out there. Quick, you've got to find the treasure before he does. Look ye to that post. This one. Find the magical mark of the lock on your map. Can you give a show? Mm -hmm. And be on the lookout for Barbosa. Are you ready, Kaza? Ask Calypso for her aid in our journey. <gasps> Calypso's magic will show us where they beheaded. Look close. There. At the rock near that sand zone. At the rock. Hey! Consult your maps. We'll wrap them in the mark of the ship's wheel. Okay. Yeah, that's back at the shop. So let's go on Jungle Cruise first. Go on Jungle Cruise. Yeah. Yes, your story. Check this place out. What's this place called again? Uh, the Jungle Canteen. So at this restaurant in particular, our waiter was completely in character. I did not film him because that felt weird. But it was really cool. He'd bring the food to our table and was like, ah, I just fished this out of the ravine. <laughs> I don't actually remember what he said. And again, I would like to thank my Patreons because when I was little, me and my family would sneak peanut butter and jelly sandwiches into the park. And this was my first opportunity to eat at Disney World. And my life will never be the same again. Like, oh my god, the food at this park was some of the best food I've ever eaten. Also, word from the... I can't say wise, I'm kind of stupid. But if you want to get the famous pineapple Dole Whip, get an app. The line was super long, but you can order it in advance on the app and just go pick it up later. And then in here, we have a special attraction. We call it the uh, Blue Bayou Lagoon. People are gonna get on a boat here ride through the lagoon and then as they get around here we're going to take them down a waterfall right. take them back into the past into the days of the, the pirates you know where the whole caribbean area was full of pirates and they're always sacking towns and things do you believe in pirates of course oh yes oh, you want to see some love to right over here with me uh, this little miniature here is taken first from a sketch here, the skills of the sculptor and the talents of many artists combine to create the amazing audio animatronic cast of the Pirates of the Caribbean. What Wed does is often called Imagineering, the blending of creative imagination with technical know how. Here's one here. Here's a pirate laden with loot. He's trying to escape. He's got one foot on the dock and one foot on a rocky boat. Good That's luck to him. <laughs> well, he can't make it. Or the show would go to pieces, you see. He has to stay there all the time and she keep trying to get away. Here, their shipmates are auctioning off the town beauties. Shift your cargo, dearie. Show them your larboard side. We watch the redhead! We watch the redhead! Strike your colors, you brazen wench. No need to expose your superstructure. And if you didn't know, in 2018, that scene was changed to this. Strike your feathers, dearie. Show them your flock. And in the article I found about the red-haired pirate, it had one of Walt Disney's quotes in it, which was, keep moving forward. And I never really thought about it in that context. 
I think if Walt Disney were here today, he would really embrace the change. Walt was not necessarily sentimental or nostalgic. Another Disney quote I found that was really interesting is, it'll, it'll be here, something along the lines of, if you admit your ignorance, there will be plenty of people willing to fill your head, which is another reason I'm really excited for Splash Mountain to change. I don't think the ride is that good, and I think it's a step in the right direction, a step forward, if you will, from those park characters. Interesting past. This is wholesome. Doing a wildly inaccurate description of American history. Oh. What are you guys thinking about? What, what, waiting in line? Just, uh, have a nice day at the park. Alright, guys. Bonjour. If I hid in a garbage can, how long do you think it would take for them to find me? Almost immediately. Oh. Mark Davis is the master in charge of our house of illusions, or uh, uh, what do we call it? Uh, a haunted mansion. Haunted mansion and uh, and uh, supernatural. Is it, is it different than the Disneyland one? Yes. How so? It it's bigger. There are a couple different areas. I was a little worried when we were going to Disney World because I am not a crowd person. I am not a line person. Ooh. Ooh, go ahead. But that turned out to not be a problem because the lines were almost as much fun as the rides themselves. What does one eat at a birthday party? Cake. Ice cream. No. Cake, of oh. course. Oh, I hope you made a good wish. Did Let's you make a wish? Another one. What is, uh, tell her about this thing here, will you, Mark? Well, this is our uh, elongating stretching room. And in this room, we also have some stretching portraits. Perhaps you'd like to look at those over there. All the way in, please. Gather into the dead center of the room. Dead as a yeah. Room gets longer, you get full-size portraits. Oh, look, they have cobwebs on the lights? We haven't got the ghosts in there yet, but we're out collecting the ghosts. We're going to bring ghosts from all over the world, and we're making it very attractive to them, hoping, you know, they'll want to come and stay at Disneyland, so we're putting in wall-to-wall -wall cobwebs, and we guarantee them creaking doors and creaking floors. <laughs> we're doing a lot of portraits that change right in front of your very eyes. As a matter of fact, one of our paintings here is based on Greek mythology. This is Medusa, is a very beautiful girl. She offended the goddess Athena, and as a result, Athena turned her into a gorgon. When you die, I promise I'll put your soul into a, into a crystal ball. I really promise that. <laughs> yeah, we're also collecting real ghosts to bring you. You believe in ghosts, don't you, Julie? No. You don't? Not really. Well, let me take you over here and convince you that they do exist. kinds of ghosts, you know. Okay. <laughs> now you believe, I hope. Huh? I have to. Oh. So this is a gravestone to Bluebeard's wife. One of the theories of the Haunted Mansion is that it's actually the mansion of retired Bluebeard, the pirate. And that's why there's like a pirate ship portrait in the beginning of the ride. And there's just like some general spooky pirate stuff. And I think there are also some like conspiracy theory clues in Pirates of the Caribbean as well. Oh. If you wish. I'm not clairvoyance. I'm Nanny Festation. <laughs> in the circus area, and they have peanuts in the ground. This is a ride the cause I really wanted to go on. I really like elephants, and I really love the story of Dumbo. <laughs> Can you sing like Ariel? Yeah. Sing. Whoa. This is where we will go to meet princesses later, the fairy tale hall, 
And this is the entrance to New Fantasyland, and they put in a whole other castle. Castle from Little Mermaid. Yes, it is. That's Eric's castle. I'm gonna ask what her favorite day of the week is. Oh, you look so pretty in this light. I don't know what you I'm an elf with Ella. The characters would love to meet each and every one of you as soon as they reach their destination. So get your autograph books and cameras ready so you can show the folks back home. Is it us? It's us. I haven't been in here since they redid it. So something I noticed is whenever we met a face character, I became hideously awkward. And like, I'm usually pretty awkward, but I'm not that awkward. Like this video is already probably gonna be pretty cringe, but most of the cringiest things are actually cut and will never see the light of day. If the characters were like made of fabric, I was fine. You know, I could hang. All right, would you like to take a selfie with us, Lucy? Oh, yeah. good, okay. Oh, I know, I know. You're not mad, you're disappointed, right? Yeah. We're big fans of you from Kingdom Hearts, actually. Yes, you've yeah. always got my back. You've always got that you shield. Could. Would you like to be my friend, Kamala? Yes! Oh, my God. I, I got asked, how do you do this with all those things? Oh, yeah, you? Oh, you know, I'm kind of thinking, yes, I see. But if I was staring into the face of a pretty girl dressed like a character I admire, I, I don't know what happens. I really don't. My brain falls out my butt. Hello, Miss Diana! Oh, you look so pretty! Oh my god, shut up! You should be how to manage my time better. How do I handle burnout to you? Woo! Oh my god, that's so cute! Yeah, I know. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it. Oh, I love it.
does not justify how cool that was to see. Oh, I have no idea. Yes. I'm wearing Gucci bombs. I'm going to wear a bitch in the middle, Ollie. I'm going to have a bitch. Oh, wow. Come on and wear it. Who told me there'd be magic? Bonjour, everyone. Bonjour. Aren't you a good-looking bunch? We have enough parts for everyone! First, we need two big, strong suits of armor to march around and protect the castle! I need all my adults to march, 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 and then calls up their roar! Roar! That's what, that's what the parents go in front. Wonderful! Suits of armor, are you ready? We! <laughs> like that! Ah, you have the hardest part of all! Throughout the entire tale, don't move. <laughs> you might say now, I'm all see surprise. Open the mirror, could you get the lights? But of course. Yep. Oh, wow. Oh, man, where are you, mademoiselle? Clubier. Now, the surprise! Where <laughs> shall we be for a big dinner with the master tonight? We thought it would be fun to act out a story with you. Well, I do love stories. Very well. Let us begin. We're going to the Be Our Guest restaurant at Bellenby Castle in New Fantasyland. Ooh, there, there she is. Oh, she blows. Oh, she blows. Of armor saying, Casa? To get the dressing. They're sleeping. Oh. Oh so, Casa Marie has the eyes of a hawk and spotted us very subtle hidden Mickey. Where is Zoom? There he is. What do, what, do you gotta, what do you gotta say to him? The first thing I thought is that my dad had a buffalo skin on our couch when we were kids, and I'm not gonna say that to him. Oh, his nose is so cute. Are you single yet? It's on the side. Yes. That's right. We're not, yes. we're not asking those. Do you have a brother? <gasps> yeah. oh, guys, this is his friend. I'm fine. Prince Philip is my boy. So this restaurant had three different dining areas. The West Wing, the library, and the ballroom. Or after the Disney Imagineers or their children oh. that had a hand on building the castle. So it's a flat rate of 60 and you can choose an appetizer, an entree, and then you get all three of the desserts, including the gray stuff. Yes, the foods. A little expensive. But it's also like some of the best food I've ever eaten in my entire life. We just went around the table and Kaz was like, this is the best lobster bisque I have ever had. This is the best escargot I've ever had. Oh, and they were like, you know what escargot what is, right? And I was like, yes, I love snails. I love it. <laughs> Not how I anticipated that. Yeah. Really good. It's really good, yeah. Actually, and every 15 minutes, you know, just in case your immersion faded or something, there'd be an announcement like, everyone, say thank you to your host, the beast. And he'd like walk through being like, ah, oh, hello, peasants. Is it gonna just keep doing that? <laughs> So when we were ordering, I noticed that some children at another table got a little placemat and some edible paint with their dessert. I think the placemat was made of like rice paper or something. Anyway, we asked for it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint mine like Aurora's dress. Yes. And I don't know if it's because we're all creative adults who just like to paint or because the Magic Kingdom did exactly what it claims to do. I did feel like a kid again. I dress Why? Because it's Is that daddy's guitar? 
Is that daddy's guitar? Hey, Andy's your birthday. Thank you. Oh, da -da. Okay, the happy oh, oh. And here's a birthday card. Thank you. You get a birthday candle because da -da. I wish for a buffalo monster. <laughs> Does a moment last forever? How can a story never die? It is love we must hold on to Never easy, but we try Sometimes our happiness is captured Somehow a time and place stand still Love lives on inside our hearts and always will. You can say your sign off, say your goodbye right now. Goodbye. To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Disneyland is your land. Here age relives fond memories of the past. And here youth may savor the challenge and promise of the future. With the hope that it will be a source of joy and inspiration to all the world. To share in the wonder, praise at the beauty, thrill at the drama, and learn. Hello, today we are going to Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom, Elephant Mother has come to welcome us to her domain and I'm excited to experience a little bit of nature and get some of those reminders of all the beautiful things out there. <laughs> so correct me if I'm wrong, Az, but my first impression of this park is it's a big old zoo with some rides in it. Sorta? Kaza! That's your home! It is! I'm gonna live there! That's where you live! It's a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. That's breathtaking, honestly. Oh my god. Oh wow! I think they're doing a bird show right now. Yeah. And we're really lucky. We're part of an Indian training and conservation team right here in Discovery Island. Do you know what kind of birds they are? Shout it out if you know. Parrots! Good job. Anyone know what type of parrot? Macaws. Yeah, good job, guys. We have 17 macaw species on planet Earth. Right now, you are seeing three of them, I believe. It would be a shame if we lost sites like this in the wild. So we're doing what we can to help out with the World Parrot Trust to help save the rarest macaw found in the wild today. If you guys want to know... And then after this woman told us all about these incredible birds and how important it is for us to protect them and how few there are left in the wild, she said, could you imagine a sky full of macaws. Oh, maybe. It looks like right here. Right you don't have to. All you have to do is make a Oh, my God. I'd like the, the one that looks like Mickey. All Thank right. you. Where are we going now, Ash? The safari. We're going to the safari? Yeah, we're going to go walk by the Tree of Life. Who is that? Who's that? That's Scrooge McDuck and somebody oh, else. Let's launch Pad McQuack, the pilot <laughs> from. Oh, oh my tail. mistake. <laughs> Look at these caravans that we're going to be on. Oh my goodness, at any point in time, like a tiger could just like run in there and gnaw on us. <laughs> Welcome to Halabe Wildlife Reserve. Carrie, I'm going to be your safari tour guide here throughout the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. Okay. Now my friends, you guys can actually take a look over here on the left, you'll see our first friend, that's known as a bongo. So our guide on the safari informed us that we likely wouldn't be seeing all of the animals that day, which, I'm going to be honest, was a little surprising to me. I don't know, I guess knowing what I know about Disney, I was not expecting the animals to be the first priority and for them to have places they could hide from us. What well, friends of mine are gonna be out here to say hi to us. Towns. However, there are less than 5,000 left in the world. The reason for that is because of poaching. 
They're being poached for their horns that carry something known as keratin. The same thing found in your hair and fingernails too. And they can eat half of their body weight in one feeding, so they can eat things such as zebras and different types of antelope. Yes. <laughs> They are the world's tallest animal. You most certainly cannot miss them. Now our giraffes here are Maasai giraffes. Meaning that the they can actually run the same speed as a rhinoceros, about 35 miles per hour. Here. Oh, hello. <laughs> so it looks like we're stuck in a bit of a drafted jam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was actually really cute. Putting them in the top 10 fastest land animals in the world. Yeah. Which is pretty crazy. And I was really curious because I know that Disney does a lot of work with optical illusions and forced perspectives. For example, to make the castle in Magic Kingdom look bigger than it actually is. So I looked it up and while it does say that they use landscaping and trees to conceal anything that fenced the animals in, but apparently the entirety of the Magic Kingdom could fit in the safari space alone. So that is real, that the animals have that much space to just roam around. Look over your right hand shoulder in the distance. Hopefully though, once we go further up, we'll have So my friends, please try to not buy anything with ivory in it so these beautiful animals will no longer be poached and they hopefully don't become extinct in our near future. Every little bit that we do really does help. Since these animals don't have a voice, we are their voice to make a difference in this world. This is one of the stories that they told us on the safari. One of the animals that we saw is called a bontibok. And at one point, there was only 17 bontibok left in the world until a Dutch farmer fenced all 17 of them on his farm. And since the little dummies can't jump, they were able to repopulate until being transferred to a national park established to save the species. Ta-da! Pretty places to watch the animals. Hmm. And, uh, Shelter from the rain. Like it's actually quite cool when it downpours and like there are a bunch of people huddled under these Aww. things. Like, you know, like little like little animals. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I see the tree of life, it's just like <gasps> it's just so beautiful. Find a new animal on it every time. Yeah. I had to stand in this for so long when I was just happy. How come? So the line was long? It just opened the line. Oh. This was another place where I just like, I love the atmosphere as a kid. I was like, mother, add the ambiance. And the stuff that was branded specifically to one of the Disney films, like this Bugs Life movie, I was expecting to just be a 4D movie. But they do stuff with air and smell and the seats. And there's an animatronic hopper, which I wasn't crazy about. But no. even this had a message of protecting bugs. Because mm -hmm. they're incredibly necessary for the ecosystem. The ecosystem, and uh, like they said in the song, uh, we can't exist without them. It was also really clever to put the line for the Bugs Life movie right underneath the Tree of Life because I literally felt like bug-sized next to this huge tree. We'll, we'll stroll out, we'll probably go through Asia because I feel like Costa would love that. Yeah. That's a beautiful sight. So in the line to the Mount Everest ride, there's like a little museum. It's right as a plot. It's right as a plot? Is there a mystery of the lost expedition on the Forbidden Mountain? Ah. Is there a Yeti? I keep seeing Yeti stuff. There's evidence. Look, Yeti evidence. The evidence. Also service, most of the My name is on this thing. <laughs> So we're gonna take a right up here towards Dino Land. It's like a dinosaur themed carnival and they literally just put it in here so that they could have some like really bright vibrant colors for the commercials for kids. Ah. Because Animal Kingdom is all earth tones and they needed to break it up. Ah. But they have an amazing little like exploration play area that's dinosaur themed where um, I spent a lot of time with <laughs> And they also have a really cool dinosaur ride. And not just any dinosaur. Take a look at this guy. He's an iguanodon, and I'm certain that he is the key to understanding these magnificent creatures. So our mission was to bring back a dinosaur, and we did it. There's the iguanodon. Oh, pho photos are automatically linked to the magic bands. How? Oh, did scan our faces? I know. Now I want to go watch Dinosaur, honestly. It's the circle. Any thoughts? 
Okay. Any thoughts? No, I'm blacking out a little bit. I'm very nervous to meet a giant duck. <laughs> So Dino Land did come to be because of all of the reasons that As said earlier, but it also falls in line with the original vision for Animal Kingdom. It was originally meant to have three areas to showcase the animals of the present, the animals of the past, dinosaurs, and the animals of fantasy. The fantasy area, Beastly Kingdom, was scrapped and it was meant to showcase like dragons and pegasus and sea monsters. But that concept lives on in Animal Kingdom's newest section, Pandora. The world of Avatar. <laughs> so, in the lore of this park, yeah. these pod things terraforms Pandora for human life. Oh, that's that thing makes the atmosphere, you know, habitable for uh, people. Human, uh, humans. Okay. Both. This is blowing my mind. This is. There's lights in here? This is as his uh, retreat. Oh my god. That tree is me. This is crazy. If you want to know more about this section of the park, Jenny Nicholson has an incredible video all about it. So this is the uh, side of the Banshee thing, I believe. This is I'm down for 60 minutes. Yeah. yeah. And those 60 minutes flew by because this was the coolest line I have ever been in. If we created like a scale, at the top would be this ride, down here would be like the DMV. I don't know what the Canadian version of the DMV is. Like the Canadian government building, I don't know. I'm not a good adult. I'm, look at this video. Yeah. This park it made me want to be an Avatar fan. It's the the actual ride was really cool too. It was like a VR, I don't remember what they're called. Space dragon flight. <laughs> and it was wild to look down and see the space dragon and to feel them breathing underneath you. And I could hear my friends across from me hooting and hollering like we were actually riding space dragons. Okay, seal genetic matching room. And then the other ride was Navi River Journey. And me and my friends are very excitable and have a bit of a bad habit of talking all the way through rides. I would just like to apologize to anyone I've ever shared a space with, ever. <laughs> But when we got to the animatronic at the end of this dark ride, the entire boat fell completely silent.
most exciting, the far the most important part of our Florida project. In fact, the heart of everything we'll be doing in Disney World will be our experimental prototype city of tomorrow. We call it Epcot. It's our hope that Epcot will stimulate American industry to develop new solutions that will meet the needs of people expressed right here in this experimental community. <laughs> what are we doing first, Shane? We're doing Spaceship Earth, which is, I feel, a perfect first ride of the Disney experience. It sets the tone for Epcot, but also the optimistic futurism of Walt Disney himself. It looks like it's going to be a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. Aww, that's so sweet. So we're going on one of Az's favorite rides. What do you mean? Living with the land. So this ride is probably not one you would want to take your children on because they would find it so boring. But it showcases the future possibilities of the farming industry. And there are some really calming sets and really pretty greenhouses that you pass through. Welcome to our living laboratory, where scientists from Epcot and the U.S. Department of Agriculture are exploring. And if you eat at Sunshine Seasons or the Garden Grill restaurants in Epcot, they actually use the food grown inside this ride. <laughs> The water in the tanks. As a result, we're able to save millions of gallons each year. Our buddy. Oh, buddy. Oh, there's a hammerhead shark. Look at that boy. Oh, there's a. <gasps> there he is. He loves you. Oh. Oh. <gasps> there's a dolphin. So then there is Journey into Imagination featuring Figment the Dragon. This ride got an update that people weren't thrilled <laughs> about, but I think the theme of it is kind of beautiful. The power that imagination can have, not just creatively, but also scientifically. And like there was a part that smelled and a part that you could hear a train and it's like everybody imagines the train differently and I thought it was a nice sentiment. For every sound your ears are hearing a thousand thoughts can start appearing and each of us imagines different things with just one spark your mind has wings okay rough start i'm liking it now <laughs> so we're going on mission space and they gave us this little thing to warn us that we have to be in good health that's how you know it's gonna be good and I'm well aware that optimism and foolishness can often look very similar, but there is something very reassuring and refreshing about being reminded that the world is a big place full of many intelligent people that are constantly innovating and imagining new ideas to leave the world better than when they found it. Uh, I think it's called hope, <laughs> that, that feeling that washed over me. And it was just really nice to be reminded that a great, big, beautiful tomorrow is still possible. You know, and the world's been coming since 1903. <laughs> I survived Y2K, so, you know, we'll see. Speaking of <laughs> refreshing, I guess. So there's a place called Club Cool where you can try sodas from all over the world. And it's from Peru? Yep. Yo. Yo. It tastes right. like a better Mountain Dew. It's, it's bubblegum. Mm. Oh, I want to try the Japan vegetables, carrots, and whatever else this is. What shall we cheers? Um, to friendship, love, and pursuing dreams. Silly. Silly. And we're actually gonna bounce back to Magic Kingdom for a second. Because I found the It's a Small World ride a little underwhelming. Like I got on and I was like, oh, why is this one significantly lamer than the one in LA? But then Az told me this. No, because this is the original. This is the original? This is more or less what people would have seen at the World Fair. More than 500 children and old world folk dancers in their native costumes participated in the parade. But the very special guests were children from many nations. Small world after all, it's a small world after all. 
Water flown to Disneyland from the major oceans and seas was added to the small world seven seaways. And I think that the idea of it's a small world and its idyllic depiction of a world possible of peace and understanding really comes to life in the other half of Epcot, the World Showcase. Okay, so we've got Mexico and then Norway, China, and there's a little African outpost huh. that they put there because they have this whole resort that's like African like game reserve theme. Oh. <laughs> Germany, Italy, the USA Pavilion, Japan, Morocco, France, and Canada and the UK are over there. Hey! Mexico is wonderful. Sometimes they have live parrots. Yeah. Like they put this up here specifically because of me and my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole market. Everyone oh on my the planet God. who's ever been to Disney has a picture of sombreros <laughs> and this fountain. <laughs> These are my favorite. Favorite. Oh my goodness. Usually they have like teeny teeny tiny characters. I've always wanted one, but I keep thinking I'm just gonna destroy it. Oh, cause I love the burrito. There's rumors of this ride being changed into a Coco ride, which would be really cool, but The Three Caballeros is one of my favorite Disney movies, so it was really special that I got to see it before it potentially changes with the people that the song makes me think about. Um, um Simba! Yes! It's Arendelle? The fairy tale is Danish and the it's very Norse the cultural influences. Oh, oh, we get to ride the ride. Oh, that's so smooth. Oh, we're gonna pop it around. Oh, we're gonna meet Anna and Elsa. You look beautiful. You look beautiful. I'm gonna ask Elsa about rolling advice, what her favorite drink is, and how it becomes gorgeous. Yes. How do you feel, Kaza? So happy. That was. Oh, we we need to go through here. Remember, whoever comes down, comes down. For his stuff. They drank around the world. No, I'm the photographer. I'm the designated driver for today. I didn't realize drinking around the world was a thing. We gotta go back. And like you could really tell who there had been drinking around the world. Like I was Disney bounding as Mary Poppins and Kaza was taking my picture and these two girls with really thick accents come up to us and they're like, oh my God, can we get a picture with you? And I was like, sure, but I don't work here. And they're like, babe, you're Mary Poppins to us. It was really cute. I wanna be a part of that, <laughs> you know? We're gonna meet some oh, Norse gods. It says the seers, right? Yes. Um, in the very first poem of the poet Eva, Odin seeks knowledge from a wise female figure. And when you look, she's in the reflection. How are you doing today? Oh, what? Hi. We just wanted to meet you because I think I think we admire someone that looks as beautiful as you do dress, but also can you kick, kick butt with a sword? Yes. They studied the sword, sword as well. Yes. <laughs> yes. But you know, I like my <gasps> Oh, that would be an honor. We're big fans of your work. I love that. You just. Oh. <laughs> what did she tell you? Huh? What did she say anything to you? No. I don't remember. I blacked out. <laughs> I, I can't. <clears throat> with like landscape. Hey, you don't do that in the national anthem. Come on, I do 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 do. This is a serious song. This is a serious song. song. Let's, see, let's hear the whole thing. I'm singing a serious no. song. You can go to jail for that. Uh-oh. Okay, okay, okay. 
But like for the maple cookies. Are so good. This literally looks like a Canadian gift shop, like that we have in Toronto. I think my coworker owns this shirt. Go Maple Leafs. And me, cousin, I was already really love travel. But walking through these sets and speaking to the people who worked there from these places and eating the food and hearing the music sparked this newfound wanderlust in us and inspiration to see the real thing. Enjoy yeah. these beautiful cultures and immerse myself in all aspects of like what is real here. Oh, that looks so good. Oh, thank you. The history of a cake of Japanese drumming both practices century. We hope you will enjoy our performance. Thank you. has already been to Japan, but Japan has been on mine and Kaz's bucket list forever. Woo! And there was something really magical about being able to see my friends in this place that we had always dreamed about going to. And on a recent Discord call, one of us said, hey, it's safe enough to start planning on where we want to go in the future, where's the first place you want to travel to when this is all done. And Kaza said, I'd really like to go to Japan. And Az said, oh my god, I was also thinking Japan. And I said, dude, no joke, five days ago I was thinking I'd really like to go to Japan <laughs> with Kaza and Az. <laughs> but let's talk about this trip. So Disney World was nothing like I expected. I think I was expecting this fake and plastic caricature of the happiest place on earth. But I came to realize I think the point of Disney World is not to make you feel like that is the happiest place on earth, but that you had always been living there. That you had always been living in a place full of happiness, full of friendship and love and dreams, a place full of hope and change, a place full of beauty, a, a place worth fighting for, a place worth understanding and exploring, a place that I believed in when I was young, a place that I should be happy to live in. What, what does happiness mean to you? <sighs> well, of course, I mean, happiness is a state of mind. I mean, that you can... Uh, your, of your own doing. You can be happy, you can be unhappy, it's just according to the way you look at things, you know. I, I envy those people. I, I had a brother who, who uh, I really envied because he was a mailman. But he had all the fun. He had himself a trailer and he used to go off and go fishing and, and he, he was the happy one. I, I always said, he's the smart business. <laughs> It, it seems unlikely, but if, if you had it to do over again, would you do any part of it differently? Well, if I had it to do over again, uh, I think... Uh, no, I don't think it would. To the Azrai and Kaza Marie, you can find their stuff here. They make a very wonderful company and camera people. If I have not been sued nor flagged, thank you to the Disney company. 
Thank you to everyone who has supported me on Patreon. You make trips like this possible and allow me to examine all aspects of them. Even when this was technically my vacation. <laughs> this is just a really fancy home video, <laughs> essentially. And thank you to you for making it all the way through this monster of a video and allowing me to appease the algorithm gods. Also, if you would kindly consider subscribing to this channel or liking this video or sharing it with a friend, you could be my favorite person and do all three. I make content about immersive experiences all over the world. The next one, who howdy? I'm gonna wake the snakes. You better hold your horses. <laughs> I, I don't know, this wasn't on the script. Patreons, no. If you're interested in a more normal video, I did make a tutorial on how to make these Mickey ears. Do, 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 do. Anyway.